Now moving ahead with tuberculosis, I, uh, you know we can have different pictures like meningitis, vasculitis, occasionally encephalitis in patients who are presenting with with uh, uh, CNS tuberculosis. So we will start with a classical case example: this 11-year-old present with fever, vomiting, headache, seizure, and altered sensorium. And this is the classical image that you get. Patient has an extra ventricular obstructed hydrocephalus, which is decompensated as we see that there is transepidermal CSF seepage. And if you see the carefully the posterior fossa, you also find an enhancing granuloma there, and there is basal predominant meningitis. So if your work is easy. You'll you'll raise the possibility of a basal predominant meningitis, likely micro, or likely TB because of our you know endemicity. The same patient now undergoing MR. You can see the kind of uh, leptomeningeal disease we have. A basal pro it's a diffuse leptomeningeal disease with basal predominance. Enhancement of the cranial nerves are there. If you see the spine imaging, there is thickening of the cordicular nerve roots. They are clumped, they are enhancing. And as we do a TOF, we see that there is diffuse severe spasm of all the vessel. This is the M1, A1 segment of ACAs. They all are in diffuse spasm. This happens with all you know, meningitis. In acute phase, you will find the vessels in severe spasm. And, we, and in the diffusion, you don't see much as you see in the TOF MRA, but there is a watershed infarct in the uh, right ACMC territory. How, what happened to this kind of patient? So see, this is the first image at follow up all this leptomeningeal, I mean, the exudates, they kind of clump together and they, they, they are grouped in the optochiasmatic area, the prepontine cistern, the spasm has re resolved. Whenever we report this kind of spasm that the patient is started and the patient has this kind of leptomeningeal disease, they are started with ATT along with corticosteroid. Okay, so that is mandatory to prevent further infarcts. And this is a follow up at, at nine months. The leptomeningeal process has resolved, and you look at the vessels that they have come down to complete normal. And this is the spine imaging where the arachnoiditis has resolved completely. There's no enhancement of the cordyceps nerve roots. Now, all the stories are not that happy every time. So, this is a, a different kid which you have this uh, extraventricular communicating hydrocephalus. Now, here you see the kind of infarcts that you see in. In, in um, serious tuberculosis, they are predominantly in the basal parts, which in the territories which are supplied by the perforators, like the caudate nucleus, the put putamen, and the basal ganglia. And these are the post contrast flare and T1 images, which shows basal predominant meningitis with multiple cannulomas. This is the you know the the top MRA, which shows some some degree of spasm on the left side. But what happens on follow up? Look, the meningitis has decreased, but there the vessels have not. You can see that the patient is actually turning into a moya moya like pattern. That there is progressive occlusion of bilateral supraocular ICA with formation of moya moya collaterals, more predominant on the left side and then the and then the right side. So vasculitis can happen in different ways. So we saw a pattern where there is obliteration, that, that, that there is narrowing of the blood pressure. So this interesting case, which is still in our follow-up, 16-year-old male patient with fever and had this classical granulomas along the left sylvan fissure. And if you see this left MCA, there is some irregularity with some bulbosity at the left MCA bifurcation. So the patient was started on ATT and we had followed the patient at uh, six months, one year and one and a half year. You can see how the dysplastic MC bifurcation now is turning into a complex aneurysm. So this is an aneurysm neurobiology in formation secondary to a mycobacterial tuberculosis infection. So tubercular meningitis is invariably associated with complications like extraventricular obstructive hydrocephalus, vasculitis and arachnoiditis. I do vessel eval imaging in all patients of TB because it gives me an insight to what is happening to the vessels, you know, how they are responding to the drug, will they need other drugs, corticosteroid or for that matter, infliximab, which is a TNF alpha blocker for these patients. We do, we do MR angiogram and follow-up is important so that we understand the natural history of the disease. Talking about uh, tuberculoma, so tubercular, they can have a uh, granuloma form, which can be non caseating which are hyperintense on T2, or it can be caseating with solid center, that is a T2 hypointense uh, lesion, which shows peripheral enhancement, or it can be a caseating with the central liquefaction, that is a T2 hypointense peripheral with the central area of hyperintensity, which may show diffusion restriction and will show peripheral enhancement. So these are different forms of tubercular granuloma that we commonly encounter. Sometimes you can find giant tuberculomas, which will confuse with uh, you with the tumor. So, like in this case, it you knows very well defined, uh, like kind of a tree bark like appearance, like onion peak like appearance in the right front door with extensive perinational edema causing mass effect. 
and and if we do a contrast study they will just show peripheral enhancement and they will have this kind of you know a, a, a tree bark like appearance and this is the associated meningitis so we did publish a series of patient of giant tuberculomas which are confused with uh, you know with tumors like this is a case of posterior for the giant tuberculoma you can again very well appreciate the onion skin like appearance and peripheral enhancement and when you do a you know a, a perfusion study they will not so they will not so any raised perfusion because it's an infection and you find a large lipid peak and the diffusion resection will be absent or if present will be only in the margins of the lesion but you know uh, there's a there's a flip side of it every uh, leptomeningitis disease in our country is treated as tuberculosis unless proven otherwise so the mimics are often missed and they are kept on ADT for years and years until the final diagnosis is is made so like this example is a case of uh, operated case of medulloblastoma here also you can see that there is diffuse leptomeningeal process but it is quite irregular there is thick leptomeningeal process the patient will be more stable this patient will complain of headache and raise icp and will not have a, a rapid downhill course that you usually see with mycobacterium tuberculosis look at the spine imaging even the spine meningitis can be there like this particular patient was on ATT for two years, but the, but there is the failed treatment. It is very important that you see the T1 weighted image here. Like the meningeal disease here is T1 hyper intense per se. You know? So if you have a T1 hyper intense uh, a, a, a process which involves the spinal, do consider diffuse meningeal melanomatosis. This is a case of diffuse meningeal melanomatosis, and it was mistaken as ATT because of the leptomeningeal enhancement. Thank <laughs> you.